Uh, hey, I'm Demolition Diplodocus. A great man once said, The only thing worse than being made to watch a crappy movie is being made to watch a crappy movie that everyone else thinks is great. That was me. I said that. I said it just now. He's going over that cliff! And wouldn't you know it, Redline just so happens to be one of the most crappy, unimaginative, overhyped pieces of shit ever to flip-flop out of Madhouse's festering seven-year incubatory womb onto the anime stage to taint the image of true instant classics like Attack on Titan, Bleach, Zaboomafu, and the bridge on the river cry. You know, if only a fraction of these accusations were even remotely true, it'd make my review process that much easier. No one wants to hear you gush about how great something is for 10 minutes. They want blood. No, the real problem with watching a film like Redline is knowing that it has to end eventually. You ever just start crying once you get to the last few bites of a good sandwich? It's kind of like that. You know, a great man once said, <laughs> Red Lines, a 2009 Madhouse film baked a whopping seven years in Takeshi Koike's blisteringly creative oven, like a reverse holocaust. <laughs> There's a lot that could be said about Redline, and being six years late to a review, there's even more that's already been said. And if you're familiar with either critic opinion or the work itself, you know what's said the most. Don't get all that graphics. In my opinion, one of the marks of being a halfway decent objective reviewer is having the moxie to get a point across without making glittering generalized statements like, It was the best. And because I consider myself neither vaguely decent nor faintly objective, I can happily get away with saying things like, This is probably one of the most technically impressive showcases of frame by frame animation I've ever seen. Trust me, I'm the one in the editor right now, looking at it frame by frame, and I'm pretty fucking impressed. Usually a film struggles to keep animation quality and creativeness consistent with its opening scene, and Redline is one of those few films that intentionally one-ups itself visually every step of the way. There's always something happening within every scene, no one even sits still during the dialogue, it's absolute chaos, and it's all strung together so well. They wanted the audience to know that they not only had a budget, but had the talent and mind to turn every frame into a spectacle, that it make the viewer feel ashamed for turning away to scratch their balls for two seconds. Go! Plot goes a little something like this. Despite incredibly sophisticated technological advancements, there's still a commercial market for hardcore, traditional, fuel-powered land races. A desire to see things go fast or go boom. Or go both. Redline is the name of the biggest and most well-known land race in this racing community, and our protagonist, JP, just so happens to be one of these old-timey racers. Worth noting, he also has a glorious pompadour, and pompadours are baller as all hell. But surprisingly, his image is the last aspect of his character that really made the biggest impression on me. JP's a great lead for a film like Redline because he's a kid at heart, and always looking for ways to keep himself entertained and have fun in between putting his life on the line. And that's a good attitude to have when the audience is here watching a film like Redline line for the same reason. The script could have taken a much darker and drab route to fit with the mobster and warring faction subplots that run alongside the main story, but for the most part, it doesn't. It stays fun, wacky, classy, and colorful, while reminding you that it is still a mature and largely adult experience, and I somewhat feel like JP is the underappreciated glue that helps to keep all of this dark and gritty maturity bound together, with his laid-back and hard-on-sleeve demeanor. Based on the cover art and stills I'd seen, I, I thought JP was gonna be this cocky, obnoxious, space dandy bastard, and he's really not. And as much of a dandy fanboy as I am, I was happy about that. If I was held down and pressured into using a single term to describe Redline, that'd be a very strange and specific scenario, hopefully uninvolved with any form of genital mutilation. My term of choice would be excessive, from the what I can only imagine to be hellish seven-year production period to the world itself and the bountiful creativity within it, including but not limited to alien anatomy, complex machinery, and terrain design, to the 42-track OST I 
I swear to God, I heard like five songs. 42? 40 freaking two? To pretty much, you get the idea, and just about everything else. Redline's an incredibly visceral and excessive experience that just goes and never relents. Even the ending kind of comes out of nowhere, like, no spoilers, but when this movie ends, it's almost funny how abruptly it happens. Like, you could hear these dudes' beards dragging across the paper as they drew those final frames, like, come on, man, wrap it up, it's been seven years, I just wanna see my kids, man! At the self-aware risk of making comparisons to the Star Wars prequels, Redline's kind of like a what-if scenario if pod racing were more fleshed out and not tied to the worst thing in the history of science fiction reboots. While the multiple settings of Redline's universe are fantastically done, the plot isn't anything more than a container for eye-popping visuals with a couple obvious but appreciated twists sprinkled in. Although it does feel kind of silly how they decided to incorporate the Robo World's war subplot at first, and admittedly, it is not needed in the slightest, it does help to do that thing I mentioned a bit ago, with the whole one-upping its own set pieces every step of the way, when they involve and incorporate all of the mayhem that they do towards the end of the film's runtime. I also like the tidbits with the gangsters it plays a crucial role in the overall story yet i feel like they could have been expanded on and added in a little more delicately but of course this is me we're talking about so don't take it lightly when i say that for what it's worth this is one of the completest action driven packages you are ever going to get also i guess the romance segments felt kind of shoehorned in and i might have ended the film a little differently in that regard if i were in charge also if i were in charge of the subtle phallic imagery i would have gone a little less phallic and a little more subtle really nigga the original musical compositions contribute a lot as well and being a huge atmospheric music snob, I honestly couldn't find it in me to really complain about this lovingly orchestrated and appropriately crafted poppy high-octane techno mix of 40 freaking two tracks. I've said it before and I'll say it again, inappropriate musical implementation can ruin a hype boner pretty easily. It's a fragile balance. Thankfully, Redline knocks it out of the park with its stellar soundtrack. This review is pretty bare bones, and I want you guys to know that. I'd like to make future Redline videos detailing and breaking down some of the more complex design choices and directorial perspectives such as camera angles and maybe even animation analysis since there's just so much to appreciate the further you dig. But at this point, I think I've summarized a fair point. For the most part, Redline is one of those movies that just feels like everything's in its right place. It's a surface level experience that continuously achieves its goals as an explosive blend end of everything great about action film, and at this surface level is a showcase of brilliant teamwork and group understanding that's rarely seen, not only in anime, but the film crew world as well. The people behind this project communicated and resonated with each other to create something truly unique that will surely stand the test of time as one of the best action racing films ever produced. A fresh and expressive tale of friendship, following your dreams, taming the untamable, testing the untestable, and doing the undoable. <laughs> And if that doesn't sound like your cup of coffee or green tea, you can leave my tea party. Coffee. Green tea. Alright, I just wanted to play this clip. I didn't know how else to incorporate it. I recently pulled a pretty glorious haul that I managed to get away with paying a whopping $4 for, and aside from the wealth of condescending green text implications bullying my choice to purchase one of the best feel-good slice of life releases in recent memory, there was an almost overwhelming cry for a Redline review, which I must admit took me by surprise since most people hear Redline and think, ain't that the anime Fast and Furious where Paul Walker was replaced with Space Dandy and Vin Diesel replaced with, oh no yeah that, okay that's still Vin Diesel. So, Congrats. When I'm not publicly humiliating my fan base, I'm here getting a little choked up of how classy you can all be. Although that just might be the alcohol setting. I know I say this all the time, but hit me up and let me know what you'd like to see me review next or do a should you watch on. Follow me on Twitch if you like video games. We're over there all the time now. <laughs> Is this how it feels to be a tampon? <laughs> uh, Is this what girls are like? Let me get these young girls out of their pajamas first, and then we'll play some chivalry. Sounds about right. We have tons of fun. Also, love them or hate them, I struck a deal with Crunchyroll, so if you've ever wondered what it's like over there, you can follow my fancy link for a free trial. And for the love of God, if this video got you jonesing or even half interested in Redline, show Madhouse and the team behind it that we want more quality like this and just buy it. It's a steal at like $10. I feel like a thief. And of course, and as always, make sure you enjoy yourself. You are the flower, I'm the rain.